Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Emily. I'm the senior product designer on the environments team. And today at the Yuck Showcase, I wanted to go over a design sprint we did in environments about a month ago. Um, that went really well. And I want to share kind of like our process and what came out of that. So the first thing is kind of went the start of June 2023. We did the first design sprint in the environments team. And this is how it went. But uh, before I get into that, what is a design sprint for those of you who haven't done one before? So a design sprint is typically a five-day process for solving problems through design, prototyping, and testing ideas with customers. Um, this process came out of Google um, from Jake Knapp in 2010, building products like Gmail and Hangouts. And then he kind of refined that process in 2010 to 2012. Um, with things like Chrome, Search, um, and such. And this all came out of this sprint book from Jake Knapp. So if you haven't read this book uh, before, highly recommend it. But basically, design sprints go from developing like this, where you have an idea, take a long time to develop, you launch, take a long time to get data, to go from getting an idea to getting data and doing that cycle um, quickly. But the too long, didn't read version of this is design sprints help us figure out what we should build and answer the question, are we on the right track to making a product users will want to use? So to give some background on why the environments team decided to do a sprint, um, I just wanna do a quick overview of what environments are for those of you who haven't worked in this area before. Um, environments are described as a place where code is deployed and each time, each time GitLab CI CD deploys a version of code to an environment, a deployment is created. So right now our environments feature is very focused in on like the deployments going into the environments. Um, we have a very kind of simple UI. Um, we have had a lot of problems with this UI, both from an accessibility perspective and a feature perspective, what we offer our users, um, which I'll be getting into in a bit. Um, but basically we wanted to sprint because we want to position environments as a central place to gather all delivery related information for GitLab. So we want to rethink the role of environments and build on the knowledge we've kind of gathered over the past years and how users use projects and groups um, with this workflow. And kind of like as source code MRs are central to a dev organization, environment should be central to DevSecOps organization. And today our environments feature kind of falls short of this expectation. It was built more as like a GitLab CI extension instead of understanding the domain it falls into. So by building out a strong environments offering, we can kind of compete with delivery oriented tools like Harness and Argo CD. So how did this design sprint go? Um, so I kind of, I've done design sprints in the past, um, never done one in an async company, but I've kind of adjusted it to work in just four days instead of the five day typical one. So we did day one, two, and three together, and then day four is happening at a later date. Um, the sprint team consisted of eight volunteers here. Um, you'll notice one of these volunteers is actually not a GitLab um, team member. It, uh, we got a customer to participate in all three days of the sprint, which was really, really cool to have uh, customer insight kind of 24 seven throughout the sprint. Um, so that was something that was really different with this. The other thing that this sprint had was a whole lot of time zones. There was 17 hours between most East and most West. So making this work for everyone um, was a little bit complicated, but thankfully people kind of stepped out of their um, time zones. I woke up earlier, um, Australia had to stay later, but we were able to meet both sync and async, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, it went great. So we first started with sharing knowledge. So we got everyone to kind of record some videos to share what they knew about the environments feature, the problems it has. Um, this was very, very useful coming from our customer to participating in this. And then we kind of used those uh, recordings to really focus down on what problem we wanted to solve and what the goal for the sprint would be. And then we worked together as a team to kind of ideate on different solutions to go forward with the environments. Um, so doing 
uh, activities like this crazy sketching exercise. And then uh, we prototyped that out, had a, a bunch of great conversations about what we landed on um, and kind of moved into testing. Um, and we created that testing plan together too in Mural so that everyone had on the team had a chance to kind of like put the questions they wanted to ask. And then this is the funniest part of it. A lot of times when you ask people to draw, people do not want to draw. So I found this activity works really well where you just get people to scribble and then you turn a scribble into a bird. Um, and I think that is actually what helped us get this sketching exercise to work so well. So we drew some chaotic birds, but that really uh, landed us into a great sketching exercise where everyone participated. And then, yeah, we landed on this new concept for environments, which is very service focused. Um, so you're focusing on your service as it moves through environments instead of the environments and deployments um, themselves. So you can see an overview of all your services, how they're doing, and then dig into those services and see how they're kind of uh, their health status, the deployments going into them throughout each environment. Um, and yeah, this new concept kind of thinks of environments more three-dimensional with the introduction of services. So before we really just had a deployment going through dev, prod, QA, staging your environments. Um, with the introduction of a service concept, now you can kind of follow a service as it moves through. You have a much better overview of kind of what is going on with your application as it goes through environments. Um, and there's a lot more data to kind of track. And this really aligns with the workflow our users um, were wanting. And yeah, I wanted to go into a little bit of the biggest takeaways for running a sprint as well. Um, the top one we realized is partnership between product and UX was really imperative. So I have to give a big thank you to Victor on this. It was his idea to run the sprint, but having the good partnership really helped us run it smoothly. He got buy-in from engineering to join other team members. Um, I put together the activities and running it together um, was a lot easier than just running it solo as a designer. Um, proper time zone planning is important. This is something I learned really early on. Good example of this is my day starts after Australia's day ends. Um, so just giving people a full 24 hours to do async activities meant buffering an extra day in with the sprint. Um, and because we did that, I would then try and post a sprint overview at the start of the first person's time zone. Um, so everyone had the appropriate amount of time and no one was kind of cut short. Um, get a customer to join the sprint. This was probably one of the biggest successes. Um, we had a GitLab customer join us for all the activities. He was really um, instrumental in having us land in the concept where we were um, and kind of giving an overview of what was not working for him with environments. Um, which really factored into what wasn't working that we had learned in the past. And um, we got this customer to join. This is someone Victor reached out to and asked, and he was happy to join in. This is an area of GitLab he really wanted us to improve. Um, so he was just happy to join in um, with that. And then take advantage of internal users. So. On day three of the sprint, we actually broke off into partners and each partner group went and interviewed someone in GitLab. So we had three interviews happen the day of day three um, and they were internal GitLab users, but we got a lot of great information from them very quickly without having to go through any recruitment. And then what we learned is this kind of goes against uh, GitLab, so maybe this is a bit controversial, but we found out for a design sprint, sometimes you need to meet sync. We found some of the conversations we had in these shorter um, sync meetings, we tried to keep them to an hour to two hours a day, not more. Um, it was going to be hard to mimic in an asynchronous way. So while we did most of the sprint async, there were a few things that we really wanted to do sync, including conversations about the prototype conversations about the ideation. Those were a bit harder to do. Um, and I've linked the Sprint YouTube playlist down there. Um, so yeah, the next steps for this is we're gonna make a plan for user testing this concept more intensively, just making sure 
this aligns with all the personas for the environments group and not just the one customer that kind of came to our design sprint and get a better idea of how to break it down. Um, Cause right now we have a North star, but we really need to figure out what is the smallest thing we can do first to get this out. And then the next thing is because this sprint was very, it was run pretty good. Um, we had a lot of good feedback in the retro. Um, I'm gonna add some of my learnings to our handbook page around sprints and maybe put up through um, like slides, templates. I noticed we didn't have those before to share with the broader UX team. Um, and then maybe uh, I was talking with my own team about this, put together a small design sprint training document and see if anyone's interested in that. Cool. And then I just dropped some additional links at the end of this, but that is kind of how the environment's design sprint went. And I'll give a few bit of time to uh, add questions, but I asked Vitika, well, Chrissy, but yours is read only. So I'll give it to Vitika first. Uh, I really agree with what Christy mentioned. And while you were sharing this with me, uh, as you were doing this point, I was so impressed and also inspired because we don't often think about uh, how to kind of relook at the concepts that we have been working on day in and day out. But it's so important, like zoom out sometimes and uh, focus on the job that we are allowing users to do. So this is great. Um, and one thing that I really started to think about was that if you are really looking at how we are presenting information about the environments, that would also uh, touch upon many different things which are very closely associated with environments, such as variables, the pipelines that are running for each of the environments, uh, which are specific to them, then the runners which are configured for those environments. And I'm just like thinking if there was any consideration or any plan in mind uh, to kind of loop in other teams to have those discussions. I know that Ben is going next, but I was looking at his uh, the mapping of jobs to be done. I think that's going to make it really easy to kind of identify um, <clears throat> which of the teams or uh, which of the groups are going to be impacted by any team that happens for this. So yeah, is there yeah. anything? That's a good question. Um, so to give some background, currently we're running through like some tech discovery meetings with the team just to see how feasible some of these changes will be. And part of those tech discovery meetings are really understanding like what backend, um, kind of like the backend team really has to be cognizant about who they have to reach out to because um, some of these changes will affect other stage groups. Um, so while we're building out this prototype, um, the engineering team is also taking a look at, we're adding in a new concept. How do we add in that new concept and what all is it going to affect? Um, so we'll probably have more details on that in a bit later. We uh, have been meeting about it once a week to kind of discuss. So I'll be happy to share um, when I'm sure it'll affect the kind of like verify team. So I'll reach out when we can figure out more about that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, Chris, it looks like you're next. Yeah, um, I'm curious to know what uh, you do differently if you were to do another design sprint. I feel like I've never been in one that has uh, followed like the official processes. I'm curious to know what you change in the future. Yeah, I think the one thing we would change and we realized is we uh, didn't give people enough warning for like the pre-sprint stuff. Um, so I think in doing planning for this, I would just give myself a bit more time um, before the start of the sprint, just to make sure I'm giving everyone the appropriate info. We had some people on PTO and they didn't get the info before, like the day before the sprint. Um, so just making sure I'm getting information to people quick enough and making sure I'm kind of taking a look at sprint members PTO and uh, getting the information to them in a time that makes sense. So I think that and the other one is having a better plan for the day four. So we wanted to do the day four right after the sprint only to realize there's a lot of, this is a very big concept and we needed to kind of take a step back. And before we do user testing, understand in like the engineering feasibility, design feasibility of all of this. So giving myself a bit more time at the end of the sprint as well. I've definitely seen that same thing where days four and five sometimes benefit from being a week after the initial first three days. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, Justin, I think you're the next uh, one that's not yeah. read-only. Yep, I was just wondering how did you, the, the participants feel about the sprint and do you think, did they say they would do it again? Yeah, this is um, the thing that made me really excited about the retro is the retro had far more positive feedback than negative feedback in it. Um, people were re really excited about the activities. Um, they really liked the buffer days in between too, because then they could do their regular work with the sprint. Um, so especially from a few of the engineers and the customer, they really enjoyed it. And they mentioned they'd like to join one in the future. All right, I don't else? see any more questions. Oh, if not, I'll stop sharing my screen. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Emily. Mm -hmm.